Good morning, Jackson, Mississippi, and all surrounding areas. You've tuned in to the Free Range Human Show of Choice, your daily dose of reality radio. It starts now. This is Clay Edwards, and of course, this is the Clay Edwards Show. I am live here at the Cotton Exchange Plaza out in Flora, Mississippi. Man, beautiful day this morning. Traffic was a little thick coming in. Uh, I left the house about five minutes later than normal, and that is a big difference. When it comes to getting on the interstate traffic wise, it's amazing what, what the, how the traffic flows work come, you know, anywhere, but I come westbound down I 20 coming from Brandon into Jackson and so on and so forth. Um, it was thick through coming in, coming in through Pearl this morning, but, uh, look, good morning out there. We got a big show today. I think we're going to discuss one of the most important things I've ever discussed on this show and, Look, global geopolitics is not necessarily my strong point, but I, even I know something is important when I see headlines and tweets coming out that Joe Biden may seek to declare a national climate emergency this week. Frankly, I heard it could be as early as today, but by the end of the week is necessary by the end of the week at worst, not if necessary, um, we're going to get to all that, and it looks like he's getting ready to cut the spout off on fuel, on, on fossil fuels and oils coming in and out of America. So it is, um, we've been telling you, hope you're prepared. I'm not as, none of us are as prepared as we want to be, but it, it is, um, if he's able to follow through this, follow through with this and the House or the Senate or whomever up there that can veto this kind of nonsense uh, doesn't do it, we're screwed. I mean, I I know I'm supposed to be all happy, happy, joy, joy. Y'all go spend money, support local economies, support local businesses, and by all means, never stop doing that. But this is bad, and we're going to get to all that. The Mack Hike of Flowood phone line is 601-879-0000. Zero two. That's Mac Hike of Flowood, located right out there at Four Thousand Lakeland Drive, right there at Airport Road. Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, and a ton of great used cars. Go see my good friends Corey McDonald, A. Morris, Brendan Parker, and Hunter. That is your management team. Great sales team. They are all out there. But if you want to call into the show, the phone number is six zero one eight seven nine zero 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 two, and the Guns and Gear text line seven six nine. 241-1944. You can text me 24 hours a day at that number. It doesn't have to just be during the show, but if you text during the show, I will read your text on the air as long as it resembles the English language. Punctuation matters, my friends. Punctuation matters. <laughs> and I know I'm not one to uh, talk about anybody else's punctuation or lack thereof because I am uh, English- Uh, Proper punctuation is not my strong point either. But after reading other people's texts without it, it's like, okay, maybe I should focus more on proper punctuation. Uh, Before we get into the Biden stuff, I want to throw this out there. They tore the old Dennery's building down yesterday. Look, hate to see it go, glad to see it go simultaneously, right? It's uh, If it's not going to be Dennery's anymore, it's nothing. It's just a big empty building. A lot of memories there. I think the very first time I had veal cutlets or was right around that time. And my mom tells a great story about taking us there as kids. And I wasn't dressed. I didn't think I was dressed up enough to go in there. And I threw a fit. I'll have to get her to call in sometime and tell her the dinnery story because she remembers it more than I do. My wife was reminding me of it last night. I thought it was funny. But uh, we got pictures of it torn, being torn down on the Save Jackson Facebook page. We beat all the local news channels to the punch again. You know, look, if you're not following the Save Jackson Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you like to keep up with the shenanigans on, going on around here, and you like the way I present things, I pull no punches online. I had to pull a little, I had to pull some punches on radio because of certain things I can't say. I pulleth no punches on the interwebs. So just go type in Save JXN on whatever social media channel you follow. Of course, I'm on YouTube as well. I upload this show in video format, sometimes with a video of me. What I typically do is I record the first segment. Like I've got it recording now on my phone. I'll upload the first segment 
and then I direct people to go listen to the podcast and whatnot. So I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to upload more content. I'm trying to sparse this content up and make it as digestible and easy to access as I possibly can. Just go search Save JXN. That's Save Jackson or search my name and it should populate also. Clay Edwards. All right. But the Denneries is torn down. That's the moral of my story here. Denneries is torn down and Mayflower is up for sale. The, uh, it's been around 80 some odd years. It's, it's seen a lot of changes downtown and just got me to thinking. And this is going to be our question of the day. I want y'all to text me with your answers today. And if you want to call in after the first segment, that's fine too. The Guns and Gear text line is 769-241-1944. What is your favorite Jackson restaurant that's no longer open? Like what restaurant? And I say Jackson, I mean Central Mississippi. It could have been in Pearl, Brandon, North uh, Madison, wherever. And maybe it's something a little further off the beaten path that, that we don't all know about. Maybe it was uh, this one gas station that had some really great fried chicken that's no longer around. It, it, whatever you you consider the best. We went out to the gathering for lunch yesterday, the, the radio crew did here. And, I, man, I must say it, I, I don't know if it was the best fried chicken I've ever had because we have so much great fried chicken around here. But I can't think of any fried chicken that was better than what I had yesterday out at the gathering at Livingston. There in a floor of Madison, I, wh- wherever it's technically at. If you know where it's at, you know where it's at. They're one of the advertisers here on the station. I believe they sponsor Kim's show. But a uh, f- free plug here. Best, as good or better than any fried chicken I've ever had in my life. I got the Nashville style. My goodness. My goodness, that was good. Uh, thank you to Matt, the station owner, for taking us to lunch. I really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed the fellowship with my with my fellow cohorts up here yesterday. So, if you're in the Madison, Flora, Gluckstadt area, and you're looking for somewhere great to grab lunch today, the gathering is a uh, is it made the list. <laughs> if it if it ever closes down, I'll be doing a show about man, I sure miss the gathering's fried chicken, like I miss Dennery's veal cutlets. <laughs> but anyway, let me know what's your favorite restaurant that's no longer open. Uh, I, I loved the Hill growing up; that was really good. Uh, places like that. The he, the elite's gone, and there's so many more. Green Derby was always, you know, it wasn't just the greatest restaurant, but it had a lot of great childhood memories there growing up in uh, South Jackson. Um, there were some South Jackson restaurants as well. Anyway, <clears throat> we got we got an hour today. I don't want to bog it all down uh, talking about my food experiences. That's not what y'all listen to me for. But, I mean, look, I like to eat. Your boy likes to eat, and uh, I like talking about food. So you're welcome to call in with any of that as well. Let's see here, man. On my news. Let's see. Yeah, I was talking. I had dinner with some friends last night. My buddy, me, me, my buddy Mason and our our friend Chris, we just, we meet about once every other week or so and grab dinner and just kind of chop it up, you know, about what's going on, discuss business, life, that whole nine yards. And I found out one of my buddies, uh, well, I won't go there. I don't know if he wants that public. But anyway, we were just, uh, we, we had a good dinner last night. It's good to talk to folks. And I, I recommend that, man. If you're ever going through a tough time, man, pick up that phone and just call your friends. And sit down and chop it up, man. It'll take a weight of the world off your shoulders, man. Just knowing that you got somebody to listen to you. That It, it really is important. I mean, I'm not saying that I've, I'm some nutcase right now. And I'm not saying any of them are. But I think it's very therapeutic to be able to have some people you can sit down with and talk to and know that everybody's going through different things. You, you know, you're not alone in any of these battles you may be fighting internally. So it's good to sit down and, and chop it up with your boys. So, but one of the things we talked about was this climate stuff. Cause we're going to get to that here in the next segment, the Joe Biden climate emergency executive order that's coming down this week. And I said, you know, man, I don't mean to sound like I don't care, but I don't know any other way to say it. I, I, I'm only worried about, you know, Earth's climate and whatnot in 100-year spans. Technology will evolve like it always has, and the climate will be just fine. There's, I'm not a climate, I'm not a climate change person. I believe climate changes. It goes through ebbs and flows. You know, they called it global warming for years, and then we had record-breaking winters. And people called them out on it. And so they just said, oh, well, we'll just change the name. Now it's climate change. I get it, man. The climate changes. But 
man, humans are such a small little parcel of what goes on here that we're not making a difference. I mean, we're not making a lick of difference. Not all these cars, not all this stuff. If we made, if the ozone layer, remember that thing? They used to talk about that all the time, the ozone layer. If that made it through the industrial age, when they were pumping everything into the into the atmosphere with no with no filters, no give a damn, no nothing. They were, you know, we still have drinking water. I was told we weren't going to have drinking water. I mean, y'all remember Miami is supposed to be underwater by now. It is not supposed to even exist. That whole part of Florida is supposed to be underwater now. Meanwhile, the wealthiest people in the world that keep telling you that Miami was supposed to be underwater years ago, buying condos and houses down there. Climate change is a, it's a, it's another racket. It's right up there with COVID and they're, they have figured out a way to tie climate change and COVID together for a scam. And look, and Jameson's much better at, at discussing the nuts and bolts of all this than I am, but I can look at it from a 30,000 foot view and tell you, I smell something funny. Something ain't right. That's what they're doing. So whenever these people start talking about climate change, you just give them the middle finger. Tell them to F off. That's what we're going to do. Uh, go about breaking rules when necessary. I think that is a quite necessary time right there is when they start hollering about climate change. I don't care. I mean, I'm just going to be 100% honest with you. I do not care. Um, if I can save some gas, if, I mean, I like a Tesla, whatever. It's probably a good, it's probably a good fit for me. I'm not spending $60,000 up on a car. I'm not doing it. I paid $4,500 for the car I'm driving right now. And if it tears up, that's going to be about my same budget for the next car I drive, you know, uh, under 10 grand anyway. I just, I don't care how many miles it has on it. You know, I'm hoping I can drive this car for a while longer, 200,000 miles on it. And if I can get another 100,000 miles, the little bit of driving I do, that may take me 10 years. I mean, I, you put a few miles on it coming back and forth from Florida. But anyway, all right, man. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a break real quick. We're going to come back and I'm going to dive into this. Joe Biden climate emergency executive order that is expected to come down today or by the end of the week. You're listening to the Clay Edwards show. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. Breaking rules when necessary. I think I need to, uh, I think I need to, to really start using that phrase more. I, I, I like that a lot. I think that is something that we need to live by. You know, my good motto, right? Like, Hey, every now and then we had to break some rules around here. Um, r- rules for anarchy. <laughs> Maybe that's my version of that. All right, man. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show here on one hundred three point nine WYAB. Uh, this segment is going to be brought to you by man. Let's keep it in the restaurant vibe. You know, we've been talking a lot about food. Y'all sent in some texts. I'm gonna read those here in a second off the Guns and Gear text line. But um, how about if you're looking for a great lunch or dinner, get out to Raymond Farmers Market. Look, I mean, I know you may not live out that way. But when I tell you it's worth it, look at me, man. I'm 6'3", 260 pounds. If I tell you something's good, and, and, I, and I put it on my show, we don't just let anybody advertise here. Real talk. Uh, we, we, I don't. Um, these folks are slaying it, as the kids like to say, in the kitchen out there at Raymond Farmer's Market. <clears throat> you can get off the menu. You, got, you can order right off the menu for lunch or dinner today. They got great stuff. They got a ribeye steak sandwich. They got all kind of different burgers and chicken sandwiches and fresh cut sides and uh, appetizers and all that stuff. Everything's fresh grown, made from scratch, all genuine MS. And that, that, that ain't just a funky, that ain't just a fun saying genuine MS. It actually comes with a tag from the ag commissioner uh, that says genuine Mississippi you know, MS. Uh, it's legitimate. And of course, hey, it is a farmer's market. And I saw last night, and I need to confirm this, but I'm almost positive I saw it properly. They are, you are you can now go in there and buy this 100% locally sourced grass-fed beef from them at the farmer's market. I mean, that same three-pound tomahawk ribeye that they sell on Saturday nights. You want to cook that yourself? You can now go buy it and take it home and cook it yourself. And this is world-class beef. So uh, look, check them out, RaymondFarmersMarket.com. Or go follow them on Facebook at Raymond Farmers Market. And, uh, don't meet me there, beat me there. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, real quick, let's read some of your texts, and we're going to jump into the climate chaos. 
Zach from Jackson says, remember when Walker's was still a soda shop? That's my favorite place to eat. Yeah, man, that was awesome, wasn't it? Let's see here. Oh, we got a text in also on the Guns and Gear text line. Just reminding folks, 730 this morning, there is a Rankin County school board meeting. 730 at 1220 Apple Park Place. Um, the, the Rankin County School Board is right across the street from the Crystals on Highway 80 in Brandon. That is my, it's right next to the post office, right across from the Crystals on 80. I think there's a big community bank right there too. So it's right across the street from there. Uh, at Market Drive or Value Drive, whatever that's called. It, the back way into the amphitheater. Uh, says my dad was, uh, another text here, my dad was GM of Steak and Ale. I miss that place. Yeah. I, uh, big fan. I, I liked Steak and Ale. I liked all those places. Let's see here. I got another one. Oh, yeah. So Josh texted in and said the Elite was his favorite restaurant. And um, <clears throat> Mother Buddy texted in and said, Po Folks. So, I, I look, I grew up right over there by Po Folks. I lived off Castile Drive on Raymond Road. And, man, I loved some Po Folks. It was, they had great fried chicken too. And the, it, I, I just always remember Po Folks having really good root beer. That was a, that was like the thing that you got at Po Folks was root beer. I think that maybe, maybe they had that IBC root beer. Uh, maybe it was Barks I, I, before Coke bought it or whatever. But <clears throat> anyway, uh, Po Folks was great. Unfortunately, uh, it has the stain of a mass shooting on it and burned down. And what a terrible day that was in Jackson history. So. All right, man, look, keep texting into the Guns and Gear text line with your uh, favorite old restaurant, 769-241-1944. So let's jump into this Joe Biden stuff. I've tiptoed around it for long enough now. This is from the Gateway Pundit, but the story's all over the place. This is just was the last website I checked when I decided to, to add it to my show notes. And it says, um, Joe Biden may consider declaring a climate emergency this week by issuing an executive order. Biden is slated to travel to Somerset, Massachusetts on Wednesday to address tackling the climate crisis and seizing the opportunity of a clean energy future to create jobs and lower costs for families. Oh, you know, that's about to cost you a bunch of money when they use that word salad, says the White House announced on Tuesday. He may declare a national climate emergency as soon as this week, White House officials reportedly told the Washington Post, quotes, the president made clear that if the Senate doesn't act to tackle the climate crisis and strengthen our domestic clean clean energy industry, he will, a White House official who requested anonymity to describe the deliberations, said in a statement late Monday, we are considering all options and no decision has been made. Jared Bernstein, a top White House economic advisor, emphasized to reporters at a news briefing earlier in the day that Biden would aggressively fight to attack climate change. I think realistically there is a lot he can do and there's a lot we will do, Bernstein said. And guys, here's where it starts to get really scary. He said Biden has plans to issue an emergency declaration, the AP confirms, but will likely make the move following the Massachusetts visit to promote his efforts to combat climate change. According to a report published in February by the Center of Biological Diversity, oh my God, declaring an emergency would authorize the Biden administration to execute. Here's where, here's where you need to bend over and grab your ankles. That's what they expect you to do here. Key climate emergency executive actions, including, ugh, including the capacity to limit all fossil fuel imports and exports, suspend offshore drilling leases for 11 million acres of federal waters and reinstate crude oil export ban that Congress and create and reinstate a crude oil export ban that Congress voted to repeal in 2015 uh, says the center of biological diversity, a national nonprofit organization dedicated to the protection of endangered species and wildlife places is urging Biden to deploy an emergency declaration to maximum effect. I guarantee you that the Center for Biology Diversity is ran by a diversity hire. I guarantee it is a man dressed as a one man, what they love to call a trans. I bet you $100 right now, some member of the LGBTQIA plus pedophile BLM alphabet boy mafia runs the Center for Biological Diversity. 
A historic climate emergency is exactly what we need from Biden to match the scale and urgency of this crisis, warns author of the report, Gene Sue. With the world on fire from California to Croatia, an emergency declaration will show Biden is ready to fight bare knuckle for a viable future. Ugh. By unlocking crucial climate powers, Biden can put mansions gaslighting behind us and get busy getting us off fossil fuels and building the renewable energy powerhouse we desperately need. Guys, that should scare the hell out of you. That should scare all of us. I I, I don't mean to cause a panic, but I would go and fill up with gas. And I don't mean just your car. I mean, every container you got, uh, your Ziploc bags, um, <laughs> saran wrap, <laughs> your swimming pool, whatever you can. Because it, it, if this goes through for the next two years, we're, we're screwed. I hope you've got dry food. I hope you got a bunch of rice. I hope you're ready. Because i tell you who ain't ready. These folks in Jackson, they ain't ready. And they're going to be creeping into the counties to come get your stuff. I talked about civil war yesterday. This is how you create an uprising. Is you put your foot on the neck of everybody. This will not end well for these people. It will not end well for these people. But the people at the bottom of the ladder are going to be coming for any and everybody that's one step above them or has one more iota of stuff, food, than they do. Just be ready. Stay strapped because it's coming. Mark my words. It's coming. It's going to be like a purge, I do believe. But what do I know? I'm just a guy with a microphone. But I've never felt like this about anything. I, I was talking with my buddies last night at dinner. I said, you know, I may have bit into the post-2020 election conspiracy stuff a bit much. Not the Q stuff per se, but, you know, planes pl- flying in and out, uh, the, the apocalypse plane, the doomsday plane flying around around January 20th or right before it or right after it, uh, Air Force One disappearing off the map, potentially at NORAD or wherever they ended up. And I was like, it's about to go down. You know, I, maybe it was, maybe I just needed a shot of hopium and I was hoping it was about to go down. But I decided to take a step back from all that over the last year and kind of watch how things work out. And every, <laughs> everything that we were fighting for on January 6th as a country, I say we, I was here in Jackson, Mississippi. I was not there. But everything that we as Americans were fighting for leading up to and on January 6th to try to keep Biden out of office is exactly happening. Actually, I don't even know that I could, any of us could have predicted it was going to be this bad. But this is what those patriots were fighting for. Those patriots that are be held, being held in gulags in Washington, D.C. for storming the Capitol. And I, I don't care if they were trying to insurrect. I, I wish like hell we could have stopped this. Those patriots, one day, it may not be in our lifetime. It may not be an ozone layer left. Miami may be underwater. But one day. There should be schools and statues. There should be statues of those people. There should be schools named after those patriots. Ashley Babbitt should should be given the Medal of Honor posthumously, unfortunately. When Donald Trump comes back into office on January 20th, 2025, after he takes his hand off that Bible, he should award Ashley Babbitt the Medal of Freedom or Medal of Honor, whichever one it is, the highest one you can give a civilian, which she was in the military uh, at one point, but I believe she was retired. But hey, well, again, j- just just Clay's opinions here. All right, look, man, we got some text on the Guns and Gear text line. It says, time for the 25th Amendment for Perez and VP and Speaker of the House. I agree. And uh, let's see here. Um, somebody said two sisters on the restaurants. Yes, uh, two sisters is phenomenal. And uh, Wade says, dogs and suds. Wade, my wife is listening right now, or if she's listening, when she goes back and listens to the podcast, 
she will she will love the fact you said dog and sud. We we did a ton of research about the former dog and sud location in Jackson when we started the Save Jackson page. Talked to the family that owned it, the whole nine yards, and how it ended up turning from dog and suds into Hudgies. I know way more about dog and suds than I ever thought I would. <laughs> Apparently, they had really good root beer too. All right, you're listening to the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back. Phone lines wide open. 601-879-0002 is the Matt Kike of Flowood phone line. We'll be right back. The Clay Edwards Show. This segment is going to be brought to you by Complete Exteriors, Roofing, and Gutters. Complete Exteriors, Roofing, and Gutters in Pearl wants to help you determine who to use when you're seeking roof repair or work on your gutters. You need to choose a qualified, certified company that has a local brick and mortar building, a company that has been in business longer than two years and offers a warranty. Complete Exteriors, Roofing and Gutters has a 4.9 Google review and has been in business for over 16 years. Complete Exteriors, Roofing and Gutters can provide you with a professional and honest look at your roof and gutters. Complete Exteriors, quality without compromise. You can check them out online at completeexteriorsms.com. And uh, hey, with Fuel prices soaring and the energy crunch coming. Uh, get in touch with Complete Exteriors and talk to them about their new solar shingles. It is phenomenal technology, and it can help you uh, save on fuel and hopefully cut yourself off from the grid altogether. All right, uh, and uh, man, more and more people that I know keep going to work over there too. I mean, they've just got a solid, solid crew of individuals over there. A buddy of mine's working in their shop now, so good people. Good people. I co-sign on it. Let's see here, man. I decided to hit up Twitter to see what was trending this morning. Uh, Karl Marx is trending. or There's just Marx is trending, but it's about Karl Marx. Marx. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a bunch of whack jobs telling us that Marxism has, or communism has not been done properly is why it hasn't worked as always. All right, check it out, man. We got a call on the Matt Kike of Flowood phone line. Hey, good morning. You're on there. How you doing today, Clay? Man, I'm doing good. How are you? Uh, this is why you call, and I just wanted to remind your wife about them good that good old root beer, that dog and suds, man. <laughs> hey, you know, there's a documentary on on YouTube that somebody put together about dogs and suds. It's really good. It's kind of the whole history of it and about the root beer being sold in stores and all that stuff. Man, and it's still available in some areas. There's, there's one dog and suds left in the country. I think it's in a Kentucky or somewhere like that or Illinois or something. I need to make a trip one day. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was uh, listening to what you were talking about on the, the our climate crisis. Um, I think until until people really realize what's going on there, like you say, it's, it's a scam. Look up fuel oil. Wikipedia, fuel oil that kills 400,000 people a year and causes asthma and 14 million kids every year. This is the oil that they burn on the ships that they cross the ocean with. They have to heat this oil up to about 100 degrees before they can burn it because it's so nasty and it's so toxic. Until they stop that, none of the climate change stuff matters to me. And the spraying in the sky. You know, that you see some days there's so many patterns in the sky that you can't hardly breathe. Till they stop that, to me, the climate change is just a big joke. Absolutely. Because, like I said, the fuel oil is killing 400,000 people a year every year. But nobody's talking. You don't hear any climate change person talking about that, not even Al Gore. You know, so to me, it's just a hoax until they realize what, it's causing damage to the humans on this planet. Agreed, brother. But I love your show, man. Carry yeah. on. Hey, I appreciate it, Wade. Breaking Thank you, rules. man. Always. Yes, always. All right. Let's see here, man. We got another call here on the Mac Hike of Flowood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on there. Hey, good morning, my friend. Hey, brother, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Hey, on this climate change stuff, listen, let, let me make this clear. People by trade, being in technology, I am, and, and even been in flight training school, I am a, a, a bit of a scientist. Climate change is fake, okay? The Earth has gone through heating and cooling trends since the beginning of time and remission. So don't let people tell you just because it's a degree or two hotter out here, 
like today or tomorrow, that that, that somehow have to do with cow farts and, you know, CO2 and all this type of stuff. It doesn't, okay? It's all a scam. I can tell you that with the utmost certainty. Now, Clay, I'm no fool. If you're taking a, 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 a pan of oil and pouring it in the stream, that's clear, right? Yes. If you're burning tires and tar and stuff like that, that's clearly polluting. But this, this bull crap science they come up with, this pseudoscience saying that just because I may pass gas a couple times or cows uh, passing gas or, you know, somehow how they've affected the diesel industry is somehow ca- causing climate change, give me a darn break. You have no proof to show that like you would if I pulled oil in a creek or something. You understand? That's clear. Cause and effect. Well, that's what I was saying. If we made, if we made it through the industrial age with all the stuff they were piping up into the atmosphere, and uh, I think we'll be okay. I, I, I really do. They were they were pumping all the chemicals into the waters and streams and lakes. Uh, we st- and look, I mean, I understand there, there's been climate catastrophes here and there, and that's that, that that's that's part of life, and that stuff's going to happen, but. There's this climate change that they keep pumping. This is a grift. When they run, when when they run, when when an industry has reached its peak, like the oil and gas industry and the government's made all it can make off of that, they got to figure out a new grift, and that's what the new grift is—a new boogeyman. Yep. And 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 let me tell you this right here: we have more oil in this country than all the OPEC countries combined. Yep. Okay. Heck, we even got more oil than some of the countries do right down there in Heidelberg. And and in those those old rich pockets like down in, in um, Jasper County and near Pachuda and all those places where they where they uh, where Denbury Oil is, we have our resources. We're just allowing foreign powers to try to dictate to us how we should do stuff. When in reality, they're the biggest offenders there is. You cannot take this country and switch it to a renewable energy sources because we're too darn big. But those other countries, they can, they can reasonably surprise, survive off that. We cannot because we're so bad and we're dependent on, um, on mechanized industry. The best thing they could have ever done for diesel is low sulfur diesel fuel. That's the best thing they could have ever done. But this other crap, this bull crap science for people who've never even seen a diesel engine or ever driven a 18-wheeler, the engine can't breathe anymore, so now they're unreliable. Yep, and uh, they're about, there's a the DEF stuff is about is a major shortage on that, isn't it? Yeah, well, see that that, that DEF fluid is killing bees. <laughs> you know, truckers can't even haul bee, hardly haul bees. You know, how I used to haul like beehives out in the open on a flatbed. Yeah, man, they they did that one of those fuel emission trucks, and that that ethanol, ethanol whatever they put in that in that um, DEF fluid killed the bees, killed the entire uh, cargo. Wow, wow. So people. The stuff they're trying to push to you is far worse than what they tell you we currently got. You understand? Mm-hmm. All right, Derek. I appreciate it, brother. I got to get to another call. Okay. Have a blessing. All right, let's go to our other caller here on the Matt Kike of Flowwood phone line. Hey, brother, you on there? Hey, do y'all remember uh, back in, I don't know, maybe the 50s, 60s, they did a whole bunch of nuclear tests where they shot these missiles up in the atmosphere and blew them up. Big, huge nuclear bombs. I mean, about when they when they exploded nuclear bombs in the uh, in the atmosphere. Yeah, if yeah. that didn't cause climate change, then I'm sorry, me running my motor up and down the highway isn't going to do anything. And not to mention, back in the '80s, look, we were going to all die of acid rain, and in the '70s, we were going to die of global cooling. I mean, I'm just backing up what the guy before me just said. It's, it's a hoax. It's just there. It's, they found a way to get rid on our on our backs well you know and it's awfully funny the same people that believe the earth is gonna that, that america is going to be underwater you know in, in, next year are the same people who are cutting their wieners off and think they're women and think and, men can, and think men can get pregnant I, i'm sorry i'm out I, I, i've checked out on all this and they're buying homes on the coast exactly it's all crap just wait up exactly all right brother i gotta get to another call thank you all right, let's hit up this call here on the Matt Kike of Flowwood before we take a break. Hey, brother, you on there? Hey, Craig, how you doing this morning? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah, on that diesel deal, the, the best diesel they have is on the diesel the farmers use. All this other crap is crap. Low stuff is crap. All, all the best diesel they got is the farmer's diesel. That's the red diesel. 
because that's that's the disease they get once they refine and refine the oil for the gas and they take you no know, diesel for scrap of that and that's what the farmers use. That's the best diesel you can get. All this other stuff they sell the trust stops and stuff, the big times the the big trust stops and stuff like that, the mm-hmm. crap. Well, you know, it's just, it, it's just like that ethanol free gas. I mean, there's a few gas stations that sell ethanol free, and it's more money, but man, it's so much better for your vehicle. Yeah, like I'm saying, because the deeds that you get caught for not being a farmer to put in your truck, like if, if, if a farmer, a truck driver get caught with that diesel and anything besides that reefer, what they use for refrigerators, the, like the refrigerator trailers, yeah. that's a big ticket, and that's also, you can also get, uh, you know, they, they can also make you pump that diesel out. And, and have to go get regular diesel. The farmer's diesel is the best diesel you can use because it's the cheapest. Not only the cheapest, once they refine it from the oil, that's what you get. Then they refine it to get the other stuff, the, the, the diesel, that low sulfur and all that other crap. That, that's crap right there because the low sulfur got 10% ethanol in it, bio in it. Interesting. Hey. You know, you know, so like, like the lows down now, when this thing go to the lows down there, uh, in the trust house down there, pull up the diesel pump you and see it say 10% biodiesel, but that's just another thing for corn or ethanol. Now, but say that's using our food to make gas. Hey, brother, I got to take a break, man. I appreciate you, Chris. I uh, have a good one. You too. All right, we're going to take our last break of the day real quick. We'll be right back on the Clay Edwards Show. Breaking rules when necessary. I like that. I really do. All right. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. It's our last segment of the day. We've got about two minutes left, and I will be out of here till tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be joined by Anson Walker for our weekly Walker Lifestyle segment. We'll be discussing your health, our health, and uh, physical fitness, and I'll uh, see what Anson's up to. Let's, uh, let's check out the Twitter real quick and see what's trending before we get out of here. I, I forgot to mention, I actually wrote it down as the top thing on my notes here to talk about today. And that was AOC pretending to get arrested yesterday. She was escorted off the middle of the street. And well, I don't know, she may have got arrested, but she was pretending to be handcuffed with her arms behind her back and then waves. It's like, oh, no, you're an absolute idiot. And uh, She's just an actor. She's an actor playing a politician. She, she, she's not very deep at all. We'll just say that. She, it's not very deep. Um, everything she does is, is, is a photo moment. She's an influencer. She's not a, she's not a politician, even though a bunch of idiots in New York. I'm just going to tell you, at some point, the people who continue to elect these fools need to be held accountable by any means necessary. Talk about breaking rules when necessary. It may be time to break some knees when necessary. Because these people that keep electing these dingbats like AOC and Chalkway and uh, I don't know, just pick some you don't like. And uh, I'm telling you, it goes back to my point about being in a civil war. We are at civil war with people of this nature. They hate you. They hate me. They hate America. And clearly they hate themselves. And I bet if you did a bunch of research, you would find out that they've never met their fathers uh, they were raised, you know, in a single family home and nothing wrong with that. I mean, and when I say single family home, I'm not talking about just by a single mom, you know, that, that there's a, that the dad is still in the picture, but lives in a different house. I know about people that have never met their daddies at all. That those are the people are that are, that are losing their minds. All right, look, I got to go. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Jim Thorne up next. Clay Edwards show.com. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow at 7 a.m. as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9 WYAB.